Good morning, folks. We've got more on the solar health effects, Earth's rotation, plasma arc discharge strikes, and I've got a bit more to say in line with the end of yesterday's show. Let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were mostly quiet, but not without items to watch. The thin, snake-like plasma filaments are all eruption threats, bulk of them facing Earth this weekend. We also had the coronal hole stream impact, very weak, almost want to call this the solar breeze instead of the solar wind. The most minor geomagnetic signatures of the impact can be seen. We're off to find body temperature forcing by geomagnetic conditions, monitored via neutron counts. The subject's temperatures were, quote, perpetually associated. If it can work with our body temperature, I wonder if it can work with the atmosphere. Anyway, little skip over here to atrial fibrillation. There are many studies on both the solar forcing and pollution effects on cardiac negative outcomes, but by combining them, they managed to account for the variation in each, both with a powerful statistical effect on negative cardiac events. Folks, here's a team on the edge of a light bulb, but turned facing the other way. We've gone over the crews that try to explain Earth's rotation glitches with geophysical events only. Here, they're still riding that train, but identifying unaccounted for forcing, which they blindly apply to the deep interior, and that is the case for the geomagnetic jerks, but they are missing those major solar storms pulling the same forcing, and these active members of the field entirely miss the astrophysical effects. Up next, folks, this is relatively epic. The existence of plasma in great impactors is demagnetizing the shocked rock. While this is a paper about the demagnetization and how the field must account for this when checking paleo intensity of the field with impacted rock, the plasma strike instead of a rock impactor is a huge aspect of the plasma paradigm and modern catastrophism. Whether it's the Saharan glass, the Greenland impactor, the melted glass in Chile, or the Santa Fe impactor in the paper, the electric arc discharge is an excellent explanation that also explains the isotopes and other evidences that come with the disaster. Whether a chunk of the micronova shell encounters the atmosphere, or the shock front itself delivers extra energy into the lower L shells while also compressing them, making for a discharge down scenario that can melt glass, carve rock, and make mountains. Just look how close they're coming to the ultimate truth. Now last but not least on the science side, cheers to the students getting their hands dirty. Excellent presentation by a college junior here on the Carrington event, how we're due to be sent back to the Stone Age within about 20 years, and how the big one would arrive perhaps just hours after the flare itself. Well played, young one. And folks, another young one was put into a terrible position, but was vindicated yesterday. Now folks, you can argue racial undertones to the Kyle Rittenhouse case. Maybe so, but he's white and so were all three people he shot and there's not much else in Kenosha. No, despite such a conversation perhaps having some merit in some circles, there's a much bigger message here to those thinking the law isn't for them and that they can go out and burn and assault and kill. You are in fact not above the law or a bullet. And for those patriots out there shirking their bravery for fear of retribution the last 18 months, your excuses have disappeared. As my buddy Rocky from the Big Burb EMP Vehicle Channel says, if we don't stand up now, what will they make us sit through next? We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.